Hey fellow gliders, this is Bob and today we're going to talk about how to create a following and unfollowing experience in your app. Being able to follow and unfollow users is a staple in any sort of social media-esque type app. So we're gonna create that functionality in this app. So here we see we have a list of users and on this list of users, we would like to dive in and maybe have a follow button on here. After we tap that follow button, we should then be added to that person's list of followers and then have the option to unfollow and remove ourselves. We should also see a list of all the other people that are following this user. So that way we can really see how many followers this person has and how many people this person is following. So to kick things off, I'm gonna to go to the data editor and I'm gonna create a column called following. And this is going to be a column that's gonna house a comma separated list of people that this person is following. Now we'll wanna make sure that we're using the email address of the person or the row ID because it's possible that more than one user have the same name. So I'll add row IDs here to the sheet, but email address is fine to use as well. So ultimately what we want is a comma separated list of people that each person is following. So for example, if I were following person one and person two, I would want something that looks like this, where I have the first email address, comma, then the second email address of those people. Now at some point we'll create action that will allow us to write values in this format, um, but I'm gonna go ahead and manually put them in for now just so I can develop the other columns that we'll need as part of the system. All right, so next what we need to do is split this list of following people. So we're gonna split them up, split text. We're gonna call this uh, split following. And we'll specify the following column, done. Now from here, we'll need two different relations. We'll want a relation to the following. So we're gonna say rel following. And here we're going to relate our list of split following to the values, in this case it's email address, and match multiple. So now we have a column where we're relating the people we're following back to those rows, so that way we can have an inline list that's clickable and we can dive into those people's profiles. Now we also want the reverse to be true. This is our rel following. To get our relation to followers, what we do is we do the opposite. Instead of relating the split to the email, we're going to relate the email to our users split and match multiple. Done. So you can see here that I am following two people, one and two. And my rel following displays that. I am following person one and person two. However, person one and person two have each one follower, me, right? And we can see that here under the rel followers, right? If person one were to also uh, follow person two, we would see that person two has two followers now, myself and person one. So this logic seems to work pretty well. So now if we were to dive into a user profile, we can now add a couple different inline lists to display the people that we're following. And I'll clone this and switch that to followers. So I have nobody following me at one point, right? So I could, if I want someone to follow me, I'll just copy my email address over to this person's column. And now I should see that I have one follower. Now we could display this as inline lists, but maybe we want to instead display a count of the people that we're following. And so all we'll need to do is do a rollup of these values. So I'm gonna say count followers. This will be a rollup of our rel followers. And we can grab the row ID or the email address. Done. I'll clone this column and call it count following. where I'll now do the rel following row ID. Done. Now from here, I'm gonna create a display. So I'll say following display. And I'll just kind of keep it simple. I'll just do following colon, then the number, where the number is the count following. Done. And then I'll do the same for the followers. 
So I'll call followers display. Followers, and the number is the account followers. Done. So what this allows me to do is display that in my app. I could just place it as the header, like this. Now instead of displaying the list of followers and following right here on the details screen, what I'm gonna do is create a button bar, bring that to the top, and on the titles for each of these buttons, display our list of followers. So I have my following display and my followers display. And I'll style it like so. And then on each of these, when I click the button, I wanna show a screen that has a list of those users. So a list of my following and a list of my followers. So the left-hand action will be a show new screen with the data of this item, and I'll call it following. And I'll do the exact same thing for the right button. I'll do a show new screen, data this item, and we'll call it followers, like so. And now I just have to configure these two screens. So I'm gonna right click on my followers, cut it, go to my followers button, delete everything here, and then paste. There's most of followers. Right. And we could clean this up a little bit by not displaying any details, maybe tiles view, something like this. Um, and then we'll do the same thing for the following. So I'll right click, cut, go to my following screen, delete all, and then paste. and format that the same. So we'll do circle, no details, and we'll do too wide. All right, so now we have a button that shows our followers and a button that shows our following. So we have the functionality now of displaying our followers. Now we have to create the functionality of actually following a user. So we'll have to create some columns to do that. The first one is gonna be this temporary value. So we're gonna call this temp user. And this is going to be a basic column, email address, and we're gonna make it user specific. Done. In this column, we're going to place the email address of the new user that we want to follow. Afterwards, we're gonna join that user with a list of our existing people that we're following so if I have, who I'm, I'm not following person three yet, so if I were to take person three's email and paste it here, what we wanna end up with is one, two, three. So I'm gonna create a template column here and we'll call it following, comma, new. And I always just use numbers, one comma two, because it's faster to type, one and two. And our one is gonna be the people that we're already following. So the people that we're following, at this point, we're now going into our user specific kind of mode. So my user profile, and then email, oh sorry, following. So these are a list of the people that I'm following right now, followed by the new user. So in that case, it's person two, and that's gonna be our temporary user, like so. All right, so now we have a list of our one, two, and three, and ultimately what we wanna do is take this value and send it to my following cell. So right now, these, this value is living on a different row than my value. So what I need is a way for any of these rows to talk to my row. To do that, we need to create a relation from these rows back to my row. So how I usually do this is by creating a column called current user, the template column, 
and I grab the user profile email. And then I relate myself back to my row. So this is called a rel current user. I do this all of the time, nearly in all of my sheets for all of my apps. Because <laughs> there's always a time where I want to talk back to my row. So I do a relation of the current user to user's email. And now all of those rows should talk to my row. Done. All right, so now I can take this value and send it through this relation back to my row and then override following. So the process that we want is to add this value. So it's going to be blank, right? We're going to paste that value. Then another action to set this column to this cell. And then afterwards, clear this column to prepare ourselves for the next person we might want to follow. This is called the trebuchet method. There's a lot of videos and content on uh, the Glide community forum related to the trebuchet method. Now, the only thing we haven't accounted for yet is what if we're not following anybody yet? Right, if we're not following anybody yet, we still have this ugly comma just hanging out here and we don't want that. So what I typically do is create a column called if comma. Where I'm gonna take a look at whether or not I am following anybody yet. If I'm not and it's empty, then I'm gonna display nothing. Otherwise, I'll display a comma, done. And then this if comma column becomes the replacement for the comma in my following comma new column. Now we have all of the columns we need in order to follow somebody. So if I dive into a person, I should now have a button in here that lets me follow this user. And for the action, I am going to create a new action where we're gonna do those three things that I mentioned earlier. The first thing we're gonna do is set column, and we're going to set the email, sorry, the temp user, it will be the email address of the person that we're currently viewing. Next, we'll do a set column, and we're gonna take that following comma new value and we're going to send it through the relation to current user so it ends up in my following. So the following should be this following comma new. And then lastly we'll do another set column and we're going to clear the temp user. Now we only want this to happen if we're not already following the person. So I'm gonna set a condition on here to say if this email is not, sorry, is not included in the list of people I'm already following, then do this action. We'll call this follow. So let's give this a test. When I hit follow, person one should now have a new follower and it should be me. All right, so followers is one, diving in, and there's me. Now you see the button went away, and that's because that condition on the action kicked in. Uh, this person now exists in my list of following, and so that button can't exist anymore. So what happens if we want to unfollow somebody? Ultimately what we want is a list of all of the people that we're following, except for the person we're currently viewing. So let's say I am following person one and person two and person three. So what I would want is for one at email.com to go away, right? I would want two and three to remain, but one to go away because that's the person I'm currently viewing and the person I would want to unfollow. So we need a way to convert this list of items to a new list without the person we're currently viewing. So 
We're gonna leverage this temp user column again. And let's say there's a now an unfollow button and we're gonna unfollow person one. So if I'm on person one's screen and I click the button to put in their email address again into temp user, what I would want is this value to be removed from this value. So we need to create that. So we're gonna create an if then else. I'm gonna call this if remove user. This will be an if then else column. And we're gonna say, first off, if the email address of the user is the one that we just put in to the temp user, then nothing, because that's the person we want to remove. Else, if the email address of the users is included in my list of people that I'm following, then include their email. Else, nothing. So we see we basically are creating a column where we're entering the person's email address if we're following that user, except for the person that we just hit unfollow on, right? So if I unfollow person one, person one doesn't show up in this list, but person two and person three do because their email addresses are included in my following cell. Done. All right. So. Now that we have these two values, we just join them together with the join text. So I call this join remove user. And we're going to use a join text or join list column. We're gonna join the values in users if remove user. And we'll separate them by a comma. Done. All right, so now all we need to do is create that same action sequence, but instead of using this column, to send to our following cell, I'm gonna use this column to send to our following cell through this relation. All right, so let's go back to our follow button. And we're gonna add a new branch. So if the email is not included in following, that means I'm, uh, I haven't followed them yet, then we'll follow them. Otherwise, if they are someone that we're following and we want to unfollow them, we'll do the same sequence. We'll do a set column in this row where we're gonna set the temp user to the email address of the person we're currently viewing. Next, we'll do a set column in our rel current user, and we're gonna replace whoever we're following with that list of the join remove user. Lastly, we'll clear our value using a set column value where the temp user will be a clear value. Save. All right, so now this button will allow us to unfollow this user. So when I click this button, our followers one should go to followers zero and my profile should be removed. There we go. So now I can follow and unfollow, follow and unfollow. So our last step here is really just to rename this button based on the condition of whether we want to follow or unfollow. So in our data editor, I'll create an if then else column and call this follow button label. We're gonna say if the person we're currently viewing is not included in my list of people that I'm following, then follow, otherwise, unfollow. And I'll use this if then else to be the button. All right, so I can follow and unfollow. Follow and unfollow. Maybe I'll drag that above. That's it. We've created a follow and unfollow sequence in our app. I could pretend to be person three here and start following and unfollowing other users and your system should work. So now you can create a following, unfollowing experience in your own app. If you have any questions, feel free to leave me a comment below or reach out to me at Twitter at rpetito. And as always, thanks for watching.